Real quick, and I, and I am going to grab some water, and I feel like a hypocrite. I'm going to grab a little bit of liquor, too. Uh, this wasn't on my list, but if you guys didn't watch, hey, Big Boy, shout out to you, man. B Big Boy is doing an amazing job. Uh, it, it feels like Big Boy gets, like, all of um, the A-level interviews in on the West Big Boy gets. So if it's the mustard, if it's Kendrick, if he's going to do one, he's going to get. If it's the schoolboy Q's, even though I do know, I believe back on Fig had one with schoolboy Q. Uh, was it schoolboy Q? I think. Or maybe it was just um, Vince Staples. Anyway, he gets all the big ones. And Black Sam, who's the brother of Nipsey Hussle, just did an interview, a very good interview, graphic, detailing pretty much. You know, the moments that kind of led up to Nipsey's passing and how they found out. And just, you know, it, it. this is a really, really amazing interview. And Big Boy, he took the assignment really well. Because if you ever listen to him when he's at, like, his station, he's like, Big Boy, and they're ringing the bells and all that type of stuff. He knew that this wasn't that. And he asked the right questions. He was quiet enough. He, he asked great follow questions and um i encourage you guys to watch it i'm gonna play a little bit of it it's posted to big boy tv as uh 1.2 million views in five days i'm gonna go towards the part which is kind of like the end of the interview where he's essentially talking about the death of nipsey hustle how they found out and how things weren't unusual his thoughts about it but also his thoughts about the killer which happens to be the guy named shitty cuz or eric holder okay so they um telling me to try to administer CPR on bro. And, okay, okay, all right. This is that. You know, we scrambling, trying to get the store open. And we did like a little mini doc and we got made sure to store. Okay, so from here on, this is about like it's gonna take us about like twenty minutes or so, but it's a really it's a really, 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 really in depth interview. Um, and if you ever wondered what the family has said, by the way, he he's pretty much hasn't said anything. Lauren London hasn't said anything. I think the 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 family of Nipsey Hussle has been a class act, even when they've heard that there's footages out there that might depict Nipsey in a non you know non flattering way. Uh, and and apparently, what they've handled it with class. They've not come out and said nothing crazy. They they're not embarrassing his legacy. They're not using his Twitter page like Fulio's people are. They have allowed his legacy and him to be immortalized um, in, in culture, you know? And that's why the marathon continues still as a brand that's very viable today. It was filled up with clothes and we trying to- it, it, This is Black Sam, the brother of Nipsey Hustle chat. You know, fold him correctly and make sure it's clean and- Let me get some, I'm, get, I'm grabbing water as well, right? Finally ready, probably like a week and a half before the grand opening, or maybe like two weeks. And we doing our countdown, and hustle like, yeah, we oh, man. I just met this guy at the Starbucks. I was going to get a tea or something, and I seen him, and I'm like, huh? He like, yeah, we about to um, make the store a smart store. So I'm like, what? I'm like, no, 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 no. We don't hey, got time ready? for that. I don't even know what. Like you say, I don't know what is a smart store. He like, no, trust me, trust me, bro. So I'm pulling my hair out. I'm mad. Like, man, what is this? And so I meet Idris, and he's telling me this, and I'm like, bro, we don't got time. And so we end up. He he get it, and he make everything. He go in, and he integrate it with the clothing and you know geofence it and then so i'm learning things that i had no clue about and in hindsight looking now when that store opened and it was the first smart store and that's why i just like yeah, hustle the genius of hustle man and so many different things like that he's done um but it's always you know driven from his vision and he got the right vision and you know, to this day, people still talk about that smart story. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, bro. And um, and just him find, him seeing Idris and seeing him young, black, dope mm -hmm. at technology and wanting to do something with him and wanting to, you know, um, have him a part of the store grand opening. And then him also, um, you know, just being excited to see Idris keep taking it to the next level. You know, that that, that, that was something that, um, like I say, man, that, that, that really drove Hustle. What made you guys want to like really do business and be a part of the community as well? I think, um, you know, instinctively, that's the that 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 corner, Crenshaw and Slauson. Mm -hmm. You know, we used to walk from my mom's house to the bus stop on Crenshaw and Slauson in front of the shell when mm -hmm. we was little and catch the bus to Watts, school bus. Um, there was a shells, the gas station there, and I remember when we found out that the owner was a black man. 
fucked us up. We was little. We never thought like a black person could own a gas station. And so he was there and he would fuck with us. Like, what's up, man? What's up? He was cool. He, he, he coached basketball. And um, All right. I'm going to fast forward it a slight a bit. How accessible you guys were? Um, I mean... So, the, so, so Big Boy asked about the location. Obviously, um, I'm not too familiar with LA, but we all know that that store is at a very accessible location to people who are from all walks of life. And, you know, I, I guess he's going into asking the question, do you think that that kind of played a part, how accessible you guys were, right? Yes and no. Just every day, be, 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 we know where we at. Right, right. So um, we was always, you know, had to be aware and be on point um, dealing with all the different things that's, that go on with, you know, b being, in, being in the hood. Um, but I think I always felt that, you know, God was protecting and, uh, and, and basically we felt like nothing could happen. Like, cause we've been through too much, so many different crazy circumstances where, you know, you know, we felt like long as we do the right thing and we keep pushing forward with the positive, uh, 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 niggas can't, like it's nothing, yeah. it's nothing that could happen. So that, that's the, uh, that was the honest, um, thought, you know, and, um, you know, it's hindsight, man, just, you never understand. Man, I think as as a, as a partner, as someone <clears throat> from the outside looking in, right? I remember just what what that day felt like when it passed. My mom passed on March 31st as well, right? So literally, I went to my mom's grave and I was doing a comedy show probably like the night or two before. And I wanted Nip to record me a drop, like, oh, go see Big Boy's comedy show. He didn't get around to it. So literally on the way home, I was like, man, when I get home, I'm going to call him like, oh, it was successful and, you know, and, and do what we usually do, bro. And when I got to the house, I remember my, my man Fuzzy, he had hit me up and he said, man, I'm over here by Marathon. He said, something's going on over here. He said, they got it blocked off. And I was like, man, I said, uh, he said, I'm going to try to get closer. And when he called me back, he said, man, they're saying something happened with Nip. What was that day like for you, bro? Would, and did you feel any prem premonitions before we lost Nip? No, 100%, man. I think, man, we just, uh, it's my cousin's birthday. So the night, I want to say the night before, Nip took us to uh, Wally's. Beverly Hills, me, Pops, um, and Adam, my cousin Adam, and uh, just had a long talk with bro, you know, not to get into too much detail, but there was a lot of big politics, getting into it with certain people, you know, Hustle had DJ Khaled in the hood. Not to be speaking too much on shit, but we came front line like we always do, and you know, niggas gonna know we gonna crash out behind it, we're not playing, ain't nobody saying nothing to Khaled, ain't nobody doing nothing to Khaled, and he's straight and hustle, frontline that. And, um, you know, we felt like certain people didn't, didn't like that. And um, did the video, Khaled got out of there perfect and we smooth, and, you know, we appreciated Khaled for, the, for, for, for showing up and coming to the hood and, and, and doing the video, and, um, you know, we, we, we knew that this was going to be one of them one of them ones, one of them videos, man. Hustle brought DJ Khaled to the hood and, uh, you know, had John Legend in, in, in the other scene. So we at Wally's and we just chopping it up about a lot of shit, man. Just, you know, making sure that we on point and security. And when, when we pull up, it's, you know, we like, Hustle, when you pull up to the shop, call us. He like, bro, I'm not calling you niggas. When I pull up, I'm not calling you niggas when I pull up and we like arguing and just, you know, but turn into, um, you know, a little bit of that. And then back to the back to back to, the, um, you know, celebrating bro, uh, Adam birthday and hustle got us the back room and, you know, you know, uh, family there chopping it and uh, just us four. And we stayed there forever, man. And when we when he walked out. 
Uh, we all walked out the back room of Wally's. Uh, I think Rivera, one of the guys that filmed the video, just happened to be there. And so he see us walking out, he's like, oh, Hustle, what's up? And he's like, man, what's going on? He's like, bro, they just sent me the first edit of the video. And so he pulled it up and he's he like, man, look at this, bro. You look, you look amazing, bro. You about to do movies after this. Look at this shot. And so Hustle seen it and Hustle was smiling. Hustle was happy. He seen, he seen the shots of the, um, of the video. He's like, man, he's telling him like, bro, ain't no more, ain't, ain't no more uh, small time shit, man. After this, nigga, your shit going out the roof. And so, you know, we was all happy and shook hands with them and then we left. And um, that was the last, last interaction, bro. And that was the night before? The night before, Saturday. And so sun, Sunday, what was that morning like for you, Sam? Sunday, um, it's a regular Sunday, man. I think uh, we had us, you know, we had spots in the hood. So one of the spots we saw, we had a little weed spots, it's a 24 hour spot. And um, I think it was my boy uh, who usually do one of the shifts. I had to cover one of the shifts. And so um, I was in it, I think I was in it all night. And um, I end up, the morning shift came in, and I ended up leaving. And so my goal was to go to the house and uh, sleep a couple hours and then go back to the shop and, fin and close the shop up for the rest of the night. So I'm at Granny's house, uh, sleep on the floor. And uh, this phone just going crazy, man. It woke me up and I picked the phone up and, and they, 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 you know, forget who called me, man. I just hear people screaming in the background and they like, man, you know, bro got shot. So I just immediately just run out the house and uh, just jet out the door. My grandma was in the, in the living room watching TV, so she seen me run out, didn't close the door, just got in the car. My grandma's on 5th in Slauson, so the shop is maybe like six blocks away. So I just ran every light, every stop sign, and I get there, and man, it's just going crazy, man. You know, everybody's screaming, and I, and I just see bro, and I'm just, you know, it's fucked up, but bro still breathing. I think uh, Kev Mack was like talking to him and trying to uh, tell him, you know, breathe, stay, stay with, just breathe, bro. So I'm looking, trying to. Uh, you know, we need to figure this shit out. So somebody had to, um, I think ambulance on the phone and everybody screaming. I was just like, man, shut the fuck up, man. It's just like, like, like you know, take the phone and I'm trying to talk to, to the ambulance. They say they come in and they telling me, you know, I'm asking them like, like what, what do we need to be doing? And so they um, telling me to try to administer CPR on bro. And, Asking me, is he breathing? I'm like, yeah, he's still breathing, you know. And uh, just try to do the best that we could. And finally, you know, police came and ambulance came and um, they took him. And so I'm just praying, you know, I, you know, I had a lot, I had faith that uh, bro was gonna be all right. And, uh, you know, and I had a lot of people shot in that parking lot. And we, you know, I done drove multiple people to the hospital and, you know, I'm like, man, if anybody make it, bro gonna make it for sure. And uh, that, was the, that was the ride to the hospital, man, just praying and, you know, uh, I, was, I was confident bro was gonna be good, man. And, uh, Just couldn't understand it, man. It's like the Twilight Zone after that. Everything I, I, I believed in or my faith in shattered. But did you get word <clears throat> like right then? Cause you did you follow? Yeah. Followed the ambulance and um, thank got out and so I was trying to go to the doctors and. Ambulance, I think J-Rock 
Then one of the ambulance told J Rock something. And he, he came to me. I'm like, no, I'm not trying to hear that, man. I'm trying to figure it out and go talk to them and then go to the doctors. And then my mom and family was there, and then everybody screaming and just walked out. Fucked up, but when you walked out, you knew then? Yeah. Yep. Yep. You know. Still can't understand it, honestly. Just it's, it's Twilight Zone, man. Don't understand. It shook my whole belief in whatever I believed in and you know. It's hard watching this interview. It's a lot of pain. Even a few years afterwards, it's just a lot of like reliving a moment. You could tell it, it don't that the time hasn't made it much better for him. You know, um, probably probably going over what he could have probably done, said that could have maybe altered the course of time. That maybe that result didn't happen. So I see it, man. This, this interview was hard to watch, man. Man, that's one of those, it's, it's wild too, because we thought we had it like rough that day. Right. But when we started hearing calls or we started piecing things together, man. And the first thing I thought, you know, you started to think about family. You right. know, of course you pop up, then I'm hearing certain things. And I was like, man, was, 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 was Jay there? Cause I knew we had heard it was a couple people. And I was like, when I called Jay, when he didn't answer, I immediately put him there too. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I would always see them together. You know, and it's crazy because we never had a chance to talk. But I didn't know that y'all had that much conversation even the night before. Yep. About man, you know, we gotta move a little different. You know, we gotta we gotta make sure that security's on set and, you know, bro doing his, his regular routine. Yep. You know, like at home, you know, with, with, with that, bro, it's like, not what is the first thing that you do, man, but where, where's, where's headspace, man? Because it's hard to just not, you know, either throw it all away or, or give it all up. Right. You know, because. We got nip as friend, music, whatever it may be. You know, y'all sharing bedrooms. That's that's like me and my bro. Right. You know, at some point, do you feel like any of this is worth it, or were you ready to throw it all away? Oh no, nah, man, not hundred percent. Like crash, crash out, broad daylight, whoever, and you know, we start figuring out who, 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 who. Who they who the streets were saying it was, and you know that's what the whole unit was like. We gonna where, where's this nigga at? Mm -hmm. And you know that was the mind space at that point. Yeah. Aside from just dealing with you know the reality, you know, but it was just go time, man. And you know they gonna make sure the kids is good, make sure his kids is good, and make sure. We keep going. Is it as random as what the public thought it was? Like, Nip seen somebody, Eric, and talked and... I mean, uh, you know, he, are, he already got convicted, so... For me, without, without going into too many details... Mm -hmm. Somebody come to the shop. They know we in we we in the doorway. When hustle pull up, we in the doorway. You gonna see me with a hoodie on, and I got a pistol on me. You gonna see one of my one of the team members in the hoodie uh, in the doorway with a pistol. That's protocol. When hustle pull up, <clears throat> so it's Sunday. It's busy in there. Why the, why why the niggas in there didn't follow follow the protocol? I wasn't there. Why they didn't follow it? Maybe they just fucking around helping the customer, doing some fucking customer service. This is what I'm thinking, trying to, you know, 
transition into some legitimate mm. just selling clothes. But nobody was in the, nobody was in the doorway. Mm. And um, I feel like we, we we hear that so often. Like it it's when somebody usually dies or some. It's like even when they say Fulio, they say yo. Fulio usually moves like A. That night he he moved like B. I remember talking to Track. I did an interview sitting right here, and Track said, "Yo, I'm gonna be honest with you." He said, "Ak, I can't explain to you what happened with Vaughn." He says, "Every time with Vaughn, Vaughn don't move like that. Vaughn moves with his people in in step. Vaughn just hopped out of the vehicle by himself and just beeline to the nigga. We didn't have any idea what's going on. Vaughn, we usually leave one spot and we're headed back to the B and B." Vaughn says, I'm going to the club, doesn't tell nobody. He's like, it's ne he's like, I've never seen him like that. That's the night he lost his life. That's crazy. From my understanding, old boy walked up with no shirt on first to check the scene. Because he knows he know what he know what's going on in that parking lot. And um had a conversation, probably seen. Nobody was in the doorways. Checked hustle, had on shorts. Checked everybody else. Left. They say came back with a red shirt on. Tiptoed through the alley and went right and started shooting. So to me, that's premeditated. Mm. Number one, there's no red shirts in the hood. You can't buy no red shirt. No, no liquor store sell no red shirt. Number two, when a nigga come through the alley with a red shirt, that's the throw off. Or the Bloods did it. Or the Inglewood families did it. Or the BPS. That's the throw off. Red shirt. So for me, he felt he was supposed to he 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 was supposed to do a job or somebody sent him or whatever, and he was nervous. He was supposed to hit that alley with that red shirt immediately. But he didn't do that. He came in and he wanted to check the scene. He wanted to make sure he, 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 he wasn't getting into a shootout. And that's, that, that's, my, that's my thoughts on it. You understand? So, and can't nobody tell me nothing about that because it just, it just don't make no sense. It's not random, you know? I know Hustle, <clears throat> you know? Ain't nobody, ain't nobody gonna say nothing crazy to Hustle because they know what come with it, no matter what age you are. Niggas ain't saying nothing crazy to Hustle. Wherever you find him at, but on Crush on Slauson, definitely you're not saying nothing crazy. You're gonna come, you're gonna tuck your tail and be humble, and if not, you're getting beat up on the spot. And we done did it a million times. Hustle done did it a million times. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you. That was the only part of the interview right there that I feel like, if you ever ask me what I think about Nipsey's, Nipsey's like demise, I always thought that, obviously, we, nobody wanted to die. But I always thought when everybody celebrated him slapping the nigga at the BT Awards, if you, if that's how you give it up, and you, yo, I get physical with niggas, there is gonna be that day that a nigga who a little bit tougher than you gonna get physical with you. That's not, that's a given. That's a given. So I'm not gonna lie, and you know, again, I understand. You know, we we lost somebody who's a great person for the culture, who taught a lot of people, inspired a lot. But but when that's where you hang your hat on, saying, "Oh no, niggas, no, we we packed out a million niggas." Well, at now I look at it, and I'm like, "Oh, this this was just a million and one million and one time that it didn't go like that." I, I'm not trying to, don't crucify me. Don't crucify me. Because here's the thing, when we think about Nipsey, we think about a jealous hater. That's the, we're going to get to the Chinks Drugs murder. That's the easiest way for us to like classify and like kind of come to terms with most of these rappers dying. Yo, you have a jealous hater who's seen you do good. That's that's even the, the narrative around the Nipsey thing. There's a jealous hater who sees Nipsey doing good, helping the community. Everybody loves him, but he ain't he ain't he a street nigga who not love because he told. He get jealous of Nipsey, he kills Nipsey. But when I, again, I don't know the whole situation, but when y'all when when I hear, oh yeah, 
man, we done packed out a bunch of niggas out there before. Maybe this nigga wasn't with the pack out. Or maybe he got told, yo, nigga, we'll pack you out. And he'd be like, bet you I won't. I'll be back. Again, you know, one of the things that I've realized, and by the way, you know, his family's a class act. And, and I think, obviously, we just don't also want to wake up certain shit. And also, I think the way he was laid to rest and the, the memories we have of Nipsey, we don't even want to think about certain situations. And you're going to hear him talk about it in a second, but if it was, if, if that's the situation that they've packed out multiple people before, and let's say that dude felt disrespected by Nipsey. Again, I know, we, we all know the streets have zero rules at this point. These make-believe rules don't exist. But it appeared to just be some street shit. That's the thing that I think us as like fans and like, you know, the people who are endearing to Nipsey, you, we don't want to just admit that maybe he just died on some street shit. I remember watching that video when he slapped that nigga. I said, damn. Oh, Nipsey might think he's untouchable. I'm going to be honest with you. Now, again, I'm not validating it. I'm not saying that, whatever. But, again, anytime we start talking about the streets, we start talking about this irrational place that people claim there are rules, but there really are no rules. And, again, you know, we we have a funny way of, like, like we'll have, be like, man, I can't believe what happened to King Vaughn. Well, could you believe what King Vaughn had happened to, like, seven niggas? <laughs> the, 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 the seven victims that were waiting like this when, when King Vaughn died, like, all right, nigga, couldn't catch you on Earth, but here I am. We in the gulag now. Do, do we, I don't think we ever think about it like that, right? Like, it, it's, depending if you're liked, you're instantly a victim. Right. And, and again, obviously, he's a victim. Obviously, he passed away. But 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 um, we don't know if some of your actions. Like, it, it, let me use King Von because people ain't as sensitive to King Von as they are to Nipsey. Let, let me use the King Von term. Well, is it safe to probably say that the reason why King Von got shot and killed is because niggas had he was running around and not only niggas in the industry. Real niggas knew that he was a shooter. He was one of them guys who would kill you. So when he ran to somebody, they said, we ain't going to fight you. We going to kill you because you are a killer. It is very possible that because of the reputation that he had led to the result that we got. What you going to you gonna beat up the shooter, the killer? Do you get what I'm saying? Th that's all. I, I'm, you know, I, when I'm thinking about this, I'm like, hmm. With the Nipsey thing, I think because he 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 was eloquent, he was smart, he was business savvy. You know, we don't think about him as even what what Black Sam is saying. Which, by the way, I think Black Sam kind of reveals a little bit of the truth. Because anyway, it just it just don't make no sense. It's not random. You know, I know hustle. <laughs> You know, ain't nobody, ain't nobody gonna say nothing crazy to hustle because they know what come with it. No matter what age you are, niggas ain't saying nothing crazy to hustle. Wherever you find them at, but on Crush on Slauson, definitely you're not saying nothing crazy. You're gonna come, you're gonna tuck your tail and be humble. And if not, you're getting beat up on the spot. And we done did it a million times. Hustle done did it a million times. And, 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 and I wonder if there's some self-awareness there. You're gonna tuck your tail or getting beat up on the spot. Now, from what I've heard about the reputation of this guy, his name was Shitty Cuz. The, the, the thing on him is that he was a shooter. Now, I don't know about Nipsey, and I don't know about his gang belongings and how he used to give it up. Maybe he used to be a fighter. I don't know. But I don't know if he was a killer. You know, you know we can't discount it, you know, because obviously we, we hear about a King Von, who was a killer and a great rapper, but maybe he wasn't a killer. So, so, so I, I could imagine... If I'm a broke certified killer in the hood and a rich rapper thinks he's going to get me to bow down and, and get me to show respect, they got to kill you. I, I, I'm only saying maybe how it went down. So 
the fact that he left, tell me everything I need to know. It was no argument, you know. It was no, it was no, 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 no. It was no sense of threat. Because with that come, like, hey, be on deck. Yeah. It, it was yeah. none of that. It was just, you know, to me it was, let me come through, let me see what's going on, and then let me, you know, in this broad daylight, man, and it's, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of unanswered questions, man. You don't believe he had any dialogue with, with Nip that day, or did anybody say he said something? Yeah, no, they had, they had dialogue, but <clears throat> it was in the mix of him coming up, talking to bro, and, you know, whatever, whatever transpired, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't an aggressive dialogue. It was just it's maybe small talk, and then maybe people saying Nip brought something up to him. <laughs> okay, he may have, but it wasn't a. Uh, to me, to me, that don't. Whatever the dialogue was. See, he's struggling to find the words. And by the way, I don't mean to. I, I, have, I did not play this to be critical of of Nip nor his brother, um, but I do want to be to be fair and give some commentary. He's he's struggling not to say what he what I know he wants to say because the he what he's trying to say is whatever dialogue they have didn't justify him getting killed. Well, this is the streets. Nothing ever justifies anything. That's the only thing I don't see when people keep talking about the streets and the hoods. Like what justifies? Like there's no rule book. Like you can hear it's on the tip of his tongue where he's trying to say, uh, it didn't justify that. No, sit in the streets. Nigga, take five dollars to you, he might kill you, right? Somebody, somebody, you take five dollars from somebody, he might kill you. What you gonna say? Oh, nah, it was only five bucks. Didn't justify it. This is this is why this is why the streets is irrational. So why this why we should tell the kids stay out of the streets. That's why I like when Wax says that because there isn't nothing that justify people who already don't believe in law and order. <laughs> There is nothing that justifies someone, you just killing someone in cold blood. So whether Nip called him a snitch, whether Nip fucked his bitch, none of that actually would justify it. But every time we see murders in these vicinities, it's over low IQ disagreements. Yo, why are you still DMing my bitch, nigga? I told you, I, I told you that's mine, nigga. What's up, nigga? Oh, you dish goes left, nigga dead, nigga shooting. Beef over, nigga. What you say to my sister, nigga? Yo, you you trying me right? Now? Yeah. Anyway, that didn't that that didn't um that didn't justify or that didn't that didn't. Oh, he actually did say say it didn't justify. Yeah, the, the, I've never heard a street nigga have a legitimate conversation. Like, let's think about all the tr the street deaths. Like, there's never no justification, right? Like, and this is why I, it's a little bit irrational to me. Well, oh, did PNB Rock um, refusal to give up his jewelry justify him getting shot? Did, let's keep going down the list. Did, did, um, who else? Pop Smoke having a party early that day and posting an Instagram video. Did that justify it? None of this shit is justifiable. You get what I'm saying? The fact is, when you glorify street life, and if you're a street nigga, you're probably doing unjustifiable fuckery that's going to land you in jail or dead. Same with X. Them niggas wanted $50,000. That was in a Louis bag. X said no. Did that just, like, again, you know, it, 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 all this shit is kind of irrational, right? It's just irrational. Sorry to say. Hold on, let me get some more liquor. Because it just it just don't make no sense. It's not random, you know. I know hustle. <clears throat> now, I, before I before I before I go run and grab it, that is interesting when he just said that. He said this isn't random. Now, I don't think it's random either, but I don't believe in the conspiracy theory of somebody sending a hit. Now, number one, and, and this is the thing, if you believe the, the government had Nipsey killed, come the fuck on, brother. Like, brother, like, like, yo, it's not like these niggas had Walmart <laughs> in the hood. Like, these niggas had a small shop. No disrespect. 
Like, it's not like these niggas was like pulling billions of revenue and changing law. Like, come on, bro. Like, it's not that it's not that deep. But you know what I mean? It's just not that deep. The government isn't sending a hit. I'm just sorry, bro. The CIA is just not like, all right, this is the guy we need to get today. No, no, no. Okay, so let's get the government, let's get the police off of it. Like, listen, if 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 Ice Cube running around this bitch and them niggas did uh, uh, fuck the police and they didn't call a hit on them over like 20 some years, like, brother, come on now, come on, come on. Bro. We got to bring the conspiracy theory down a little bit, okay? Now, I'm not saying it's outside the realm of possibility. And actually, I'm more in belief and maybe actually, maybe I'm even stupid for that because I, I just I wasn't around during that time really. When maybe when Biggie died, you know they, they always say like, oh no, the police with Biggie and Pac. I, the, the Pac thing I literally think was the, those was, was was the Southside Crips, hundred percent, right? It, did 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 he have some money up on it? Maybe. What Southside Crips, bro? It's not the fucking police. Okay. Now, did the police maybe didn't give a fuck about him dying? So. They kind of didn't do the most to really get this investigation closed. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. But the police sending the hit? Nah, nah, nah. Um, government sending the hit? Uh, I mean, Pac was very, you know, Pac was very, uh, um, very influential. Still, still, I say no. The biggie thing, uh, like, you know, some people have theories on maybe the government wanted to start this coastal. Nah, I, I'm just not believing it. So who could have been responsible for a possible Nipsey Hussle hit if there was going to be one? And when I hear Black Sam say that, unless he's one of the people who think the CIA, which, which hey, that's his brother. I would never say nothing negative about his brother um, because I know what I know what loss does to a family. You know, I, I lost my, my uncle to gun violence. And to this day, my mama blame a relative. Because that relative was having a dispute with my my, my uncle. Um, it was actually his, her sister. They were having a dispute, like, for a couple months prior. And apparently during one of the arguments, my, uh, it, it was thrown around, I'll get you killed. But they're sisters and brothers. They lived in the same place, right? And police came later and told us that, hey, listen, it's like a long story. I think I told y'all. Jamaica's just an odd place. So... Some guys came, broke into my, my, my grandma's house. My uncle, who lived in the house next door, he came over, confronted the gunman. The gun jammed. So the, they tried to shoot my, my uncle in the head, gun jammed. My uncle beat the nigga to death. And, and essentially, the police came. This is Jamaica, so like, fuck, fuck an arrest. Two got away. One was caught and was beaten by him. And he, he was hitting him with a pitchfork. And basically, the, the guy was near death. The cop instructed, like, it's Jamaica. The cops basically said, finish this nigga off. So the nigga died. Um, yeah, yeah, bro, they're not handcuffing him. Like, fuck out of here. Like, yo, let's bring this nigga to the morgue. Like, this is Jamaica, my nigga, right? What ended up happening is that uh, two, the other two dudes, one of them got arrested, I think. One of them. I don't think it was two of them. But one of them got arrested, right? When they got arrested, you have to show up to court. Like, you know, but it's Jamaica, like, bro, like, niggas ain't show up to court like, why, so what do you want, nigga? Shit just don't happen like that. So, essentially, the dude sat in, in jail for a couple of months. The dude got out of jail because, again, he would have got a robbery charge. Or, I don't know, they would have trumped him to murder, I guess, because one of their co-conspirators died. But nobody from my family went to court. We didn't go to court at all. So, the guys, the two guys who escaped got out. The, the morning of when my uncle died... He saw the guy walk past the house. One of the guys who, whatever. Now, my uncle's not no gangster, nothing. But he sees a guy. Guy sees him. He's just like, all right, fuck it. You're, you're thinking that's the culture of how shit is? You're thinking that's the culture of how shit is? All right, we didn't go to the court on y'all, so y'all have no get back to get. The one guy who died, y'all got to chalk it up. Y'all chalk it up. That nigga who died, y'all fucked up. And we're not going to go to court to keep... The, the, you thinking like it's like that? Hell nah. That nigga spun in and shot my uncle, bro. So that's really what happened. My mama still don't believe that story. <laughs> my, my mama is in disbelief. Like she would, and trust me, my mama created a whole scene at the funeral. Like she not even believing them niggas did it. It's like like the, the 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 whole police force is there telling my mom like, no, it, 
My mom was like, nope, not believing it. Then my mom was like, well, if they did do it, they got sent by her. You can, uh, uh, a sibling, a family member grief, they're trying their best to deal when you're grieving to, to make sense of something. So again, I don't know if that's the same with Black Sam. He might be trying to make sense of it. Damn, why was this shit kind of so odd that day? Why was certain things off? Why did the dude come back twice? Now, okay, so who would send the hit if we're talking about that? I don't know, honestly. I think particularly, um, they keep mentioning Big U, but I think that's such a hard accusation to make. And by the way, he doesn't make that accusation. Wax been trying to almost lightly make the accusation, but even then, why the fuck would Big U, supposedly who did business with Nipsey Hussle, is from the same gang as Nipsey Hussle, why the fuck would he do it? So again, I, I really don't believe is as big as people um, think it is. I kind of think, bruh, Nipsey disrespected somebody. This is my opinion. I think he disrespected somebody. That person who, you know when he did the murder, he ran to a psych hospital. The nigga's off meds already. You disrespecting a guy who's supposedly a killer, a guy who's mentally unstable, and you expect him to come with a carefully calculated plot? No. Instinctively and instinctually, he went and grabbed a gun and said, yo, I'm going to teach this nigga a lesson and... Now, did he want to kill him? I, well, actually, he clearly did because he stood over him like and shot him multiple times. But still, I think it's that is that deep. I just don't think like this is mad like things to be put into it. You know what I'm saying? You're saying Wax said he was trying to extort Nipsey, bro. But 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 here's the thing. Let me ask y'all this. This is yo and, and fuck with Wax. I, I fuck with Wax so heavy. But but also let's be honest. If we're saying hit. We need to we need now to be very clear. You're saying a hit. So this guy didn't have money for a proper lawyer. Basically got damn near life in in prison. You don't think if the police had barely or even half credible information, you don't think this guy would tell on on Big U? This is what I be saying to y'all. Everybody snitched but the guy who you really think got paid for a hit. Nigga, if you got paid for a hit, you're the first nigga to snitch. Duh, like, like, why wouldn't he tell? Like, here's my thing. We're talking about all of the snitches in hip-hop who basically never killed nobody, and they're still telling. Why would the guy who did the murder not tell if he did it on behalf of somebody else? And then they could verify. Okay, how did you get paid? When did you communicate? Blah, 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 blah. Let's check everything. That's only where my confusion lies when y'all say somebody, like, just think about it. Bro, people are snitching when they had, yo, in the Fulio's case, the mom is snitching on her son because her son took her car to the murder. She ain't, at worst, she could have kept quiet and faced an accessory to murder charge. At worst. At worst. But she don't want shit. So we're talking about people who are telling who don't have a murder. Why the fuck would the murderer not tell on the person who paid him, especially if that could get them maybe 10 years shaved off their sentence? Oh, this is L.A., nigga? Man, stop it. That's where I don't believe y'all. I believe if that nigga was paid off, he would snitch in a heartbeat. Bro, the nigga got cut in his face multiple times in jail. You know, right? Eric, uh, uh, Eric Holder, or is that name? Yeah. He got cut in his face. Bruh, this is how they're doing him. <laughs> Nigga, I would have been in court raising my hand. Hey, you're right. I just want to say this. I got paid for this shit. And I don't know why all the gang members in, in, in jail is acting like the leader didn't pay me. Uh, Stop fucking me up. Stop blacking my eye. Stop cutting and stabbing me. I just did a job. Bruh, what are y'all talking about? <laughs> so you're saying he's just so real. He took life, gets his ass whipped, and they're trying to kill him. And he won't snitch on a guy who put the hit out. Really, nigga? Really? <laughs> yeah, keep beating my ass. But I won't tell y'all the guy who really set this up. What? <laughs> he didn't get paid, nigga? I don't care if he got paid or not. I'm telling you the guy whose idea it was. It wasn't my idea at all. <laughs> all right, anyway. Let me grab some more liquor chat. You know, transitioning to some legitimate mm. just selling clothes. 
but nobody was in the, nobody was in the doorway. And um, from my understanding, no boy walked up with no shirt on first to check the scene because he know what's, he know what he know what's going on in that parking lot. And um, had a conversation. Probably seen nobody was in the doorways. Checked hustle hat on shorts. Checked everybody else. Left. They say came back with a red shirt on. Tiptoed through the alley and went right and started shooting. So to me, that's premeditated. Number one, there's no red shirts in the hood. <clears throat> you can't buy no red shirt. No, no liquor store sell no red shirt. Number two, when a nigga come through the alley with a red shirt, that's the throw off or the Bloods did it or the Inglewood families did it or the BPS, that's the throw off, red shirt. So for me, he felt he was, supposed to, he, he, he was supposed to do a job or somebody sent him or whatever, and he was nervous. He was or, supposed to hit that alley with that red. Or possibly he was just trying to get away, right? Because the guy's supposed to be a crip. He's a rolling 60 crip. Hey, if you want him to look for other people, even though, by the way, I don't think he had a mask on, but I think he did shoot other people. So he didn't want no witnesses, but. Red shirt immediately, but he didn't do that. He came in and he wanted to check the scene. He wanted to make sure he, 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 he wasn't getting into a shootout. And that's, that, that's, my, that's my thoughts on it. You understand? So, and can't nobody tell me nothing about that because it just, it just don't make no sense. It's not random. That's what I was saying about the irrational, um, it's no use to argue with a, a a relative of someone who passed. They've already sunk in. That's part of dealing with it to move on. They've sunk into a belief. And and I respect it. I do respect it. And, you know, I know hustle. You know, ain't nobody, ain't nobody gonna say nothing crazy to hustle because they know what come with it. No matter what age you are, niggas ain't saying nothing crazy to hustle. Wherever you find them at. But on Crenshaw and Slauson, definitely you're not saying nothing crazy. You're going to come, you're going to tuck your tail and be humble. And if not, you're getting beat up on the spot. And we done did it a million times. Hustle done did it a million times. So the fact that he left, tell me everything I need to know. It was no argument. You know, it was no, it was no, 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 no. It was no sense of threat. Because with that come, like, hey, be on deck. Yeah, it, it was yeah. none of that. It was just, you know, to me it was... Let me come through, let me see what's going on, and then let me, you know, in this broad daylight, man, and it's, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of unanswered questions, man. You don't believe he had any dialogue with, with Nip that day, or did anybody say he said something? Yeah, no, they had, they had dialogue, but it was in the mix of him coming up, talking to bro, and, you know, whatever, whatever transpired, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't an aggressive dialogue. It was just... It's maybe small talk, and then maybe people saying Nip brought something up to him. Okay, you may have, but it wasn't a. Uh, to me, to me, that don't. Whatever the dialogue was, that didn't that that didn't um, that didn't justify or that didn't that didn't turn into that. You know what I'm saying? He he came there for he came there for a reason, and man and, and man got the reverses. I mean, he got the you know charges reversed because Hustle asked him something about it and humbled him real quick, but that also told me I, I, I know how they're you know how he's internalized it. Yeah, if, if I'm a hood nigga and this is my hood all the time, I, I don't believe that Nipsey lived in that particular neighborhood still. And if I gotta be around here and you're the big rapper who drives up in your big luxury vehicles with your chains on and you're now at the store that's in the area that i gotta be at whether or not i'm allowed at the store and you're gonna embarrass me i gotta still be here you don't gotta be here so yeah you might think that's not a big deal but to me it's a big deal maybe small talk and then maybe people saying nip brought something up to him okay you may have but it wasn't, uh, 
to me, to me that don't, whatever the dialogue was, that didn't, that, that didn't, um, that didn't justify or that didn't, that didn't turn into that. You know what I'm saying? He, he came there for, he came there for a reason. And man, and, and man got the reverses. I mean, he got the, you know, charges reversed because Hustle asked him something about it and humbled him real quick. But I think, um, you know, it's going to come to the light. Did you know Eric Holder <clears throat> before? Yeah, we probably seen him, seen him a couple times um, when he was younger. You know, he, he hadn't been he hadn't been in the in, in the hood like that. Um, they're saying he had some uh, like a snitch jacket on him or he couldn't come around. Um, you know, me personally, Hustle, Fats, like we seen a lot of the homies raised because we at that shop seven days a week. Mm -hmm. You know, before it was the Marathon store, when it was Slauson T, Slauson Ave, we had weed spots all in the hood. So we seen a lot of the young homies raised from kids to teenagers to adults. We watch them, they know us, we know them. Anything we throw in the parking lot, if you're from that area, if you're from the 60s, if you from the 30s to the 100s, when we hustle, throw something in that parking lot, you coming from whatever it is. You in the hood, you smoking weed, you coming to our spots. He was never at any, any, any functions. He was never at any grand openings. He was never at any, anything Hustle mm. was doing. He was never at any shows. It's cause he wasn't good in the hood. So all this other shit niggas is talking about, I don't know it. He wasn't good, you know? He wasn't good and he, he, he was not good. And he, was, and, and, and he was not around for a reason, you know? And, and, and to that point, we didn't see him. <clears throat> so he's kind of corroborating that, that, that snitching angle. Hey, Sam, why was it important to you and to the family to make sure that L.A. had a chance? Okay, all right. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so, so that's kind of the, 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 the crux of the whole thing. Um, to plan it, and you know, there's no way to handle it. So, you know, you know did, didn't, but that was the only time in my mind I'm like, okay, this is, this is why niggas... This is when a nigga can't deal with this shit. Like, there's no way to fix this. This is. The yeah. Rest in peace, Nipsey Hussle. All right. Uh, let me see. We still ain't get to, yo, impressive chat. Four hours and 30 minutes in. We haven't gotten to the Drake section yet. We haven't gotten to the Drake section yet. I canceled my obligation. Uh, I I'm telling you what we got still lined up you might be able to get ray daniels on here i gotta check my messages we're actually about to do about to do famous decks now we got erica mana safari uh blue face sentence four years chinks drugs murderer being sentenced young miami we're going to talk about Le michael rubin quando rondo pleads guilty then rowdy rebel and la then all we have is drink topics for the rest of the stream, unless we could do something else. But I think about that time, we're at 4.30 now. Uh, yeah, that'll be about two and a half hours right there. So we'll be pushing about seven hours. So we'll see how we feel then. Uh, any other topics that, that I'm missing? Anything breaking today? Because I know... It's